Well, I'm sure that you'll all be surprised to know that conservatives once again are outraged over something completely insignificant. This time, they're mad about a Grammy performance by Sam Smith and Kim Petras. Now, unfortunately, I can't play the video clip for you. I'll link to it down below if you want to watch it. But you can kind of see from the photograph why conservatives were angry. He's wearing a devil hat, and they were very clearly going for a satanic-esque aesthetic. Ross Story explains, during the award ceremony, Smith and Petras performed their song Unholy, with Smith clad in a top hat featuring red devil horns and surrounded by red-robed female dancers. Now, on top of that, there were flames on the stage, the lighting was red, so they were very clearly going for that type of hellish vibe, and conservatives were outraged because they thought that it was promoting Satanism. Now, this isn't the first time that musicians have used this aesthetic and it's not the first time more specifically that lgbtq plus artists in particular have used this type of imagery now for those of you who don't know sam smith is non-binary and kim petras is transgender now lil nas x if you'll recall from like a year or two ago was also in hot water with conservatives because he did the same thing so in his music video call me by your name if you'll remember that when we talked about it on the show, actually, because once again, conservatives were outraged about that. Uh, he gave Satan a lap dance. Now, I don't necessarily know if this is applicable to this particular performance or the meaning behind the song. But when LGBTQ plus artists use this type of hell aesthetic, there's usually more significance behind that meaning. So I'm, I'm just paraphrasing what Lil Nas X said, but what he said was really important. So he said that throughout all of his life, he was taught to hate himself for being gay. He was told that he would burn in hell for all of eternity if he accepted himself. So when he finally decided to stop hating himself and embrace who he was, he kind of accepted his fate. You know, if conservatives said, you're going to go to hell for being gay. Then he said, all right, I'm going to rock it. So in his music video, he owned it. He slid a stripper pole uh, or slid down a stripper pole all the way down to hell. And he gave Satan a lap dance and seduced him because that's him saying, I don't care what you tell me. If this is my fate, it's not going to change who I am to my core. And if I'm going to go to hell, fine, I'll be myself there too. I'll own that too. So I can't necessarily speak to the message behind this song, but when queer artists use this type of imagery, oftentimes there is more broadly a, a meaning behind it. But either way, conservatives were outraged because it was pretty explicitly satanic. And the responses here are genuinely unhinged and especially hilarious because there was an advertisement from Pfizer also right after this performance. So because of that, they're basically saying this is confirmation that the COVID-19 vaccine, or I shouldn't say that they're saying this, they're implying that this is confirmation that the COVID-19 vaccine is the mark of the beast, yada, yada, yada. But I'll just shut up and we'll read some of the responses because these are genuinely hilarious. Benny Johnson says, the Grammys have gone full on Satan worship on primetime TV. Don't believe me? Watch. And he links to the entire video. <laughs> and look, I've got to say, I couldn't find the video clip until I saw his tweet. So I appreciate him linking to it. I'll link to his tweet if you want to watch it for yourself down below. But on top of that, Liz Wheeler writes, don't fight the culture wars, they say. Meanwhile, demons are teaching your kids to worship Satan. I could throw up. And Ted Cruz responded to that saying, this is evil. Charlie Kirk says, the devil brought to you by Pfizer. And Matt Walsh chimed in saying, it's not surprising to see a satanic ritual at the Grammys. Satanism is the worship of the self. Much of modern pop music is satanic in this sense. Leftism is satanism. The only change is that now they're being more explicit about it. Now, let me just pause right there. So the reference to the satanic ritual is hilarious because the female dancers referenced in the Ross Story article were like holding hands and dancing around Sam Smith as they were singing. And because of that, they're saying that was tantamount to a satanic ritual. But I just love that Matt Walsh here is pretending as if he is some sort of authority on what is and isn't moral when last week he quite literally called for doctors who give gender affirming care to trans people to be jailed indefinitely and if he had his way executed. So I don't think that he's the best judge on what is and isn't moral, but nonetheless, there's more tweets and they get more unhinged from here. Ben Q says, I know we on the right probably use the word satanic too often, but this performance from Sam Smith is literally a tribute to Satan. <laughs>
<laughs> Robbie Starbucks says, Sam Smith's satanic performance at the Grammys ended with a Pfizer commercial. You can't get it more on the nose than that. Pfizer and Hollywood deserve each other. And last but not least, this one is by far my favorite. Hollywood is infiltrated by satanic radical left lunatics. They cancel Kanye West over his opinion and his net worth drops by over 50%. Meanwhile, Sam Smith is allowed to have a satanic performance at the Grammys that is sponsored by Pfizer. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I shouldn't have to make this make sense for you, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm a very kind individual. The reason why one is okay and the other isn't is because Satan, who they are allegedly paying tribute to here, is a fictional character, whereas Hitler, who Kanye West praised repeatedly, is not. Hitler is responsible for the death of millions of innocent people. So that's why praising one is different than praising the other. These two examples are not the same. It's a false equivalence. Do you understand? This right here is subjective. If you are religious, then odds are you're going to find it offensive. If you're not, you're going to find it completely banal, as I do, because I don't believe in religion. I don't believe in Satan. That's a fictional character, objectively speaking. There's no evidence that Satan is real. So, you know, these conservatives, of course, they were going to find this offensive. And I think that part of the reason why they did this, aside from the deeper significance we we talked about, the possibility of it uh, of it having, is because these types of satanic visuals, it gets attention. It's not the first time, mind you, that musicians have adopted this aesthetic. So in 1983, there's a group of gender non-conforming musicians named Motley Crue. Maybe you've heard of them. Now, they released a song called Shout at the Devil, and their vocalist Vince Neil said that people thought that they were actually satanic and angry, but ultimately they didn't really care because they were just having fun. And he also noted that the satanic imagery got them more attention, so it was kind of a win-win-win. In fact, Tom Taylor at Far Out gave a thorough breakdown of the history of conservative outrage over rock and roll, with the biggest examples being Judas Priest, Gene Simmons from Kiss, and even Elvis being accused of Satanism. So, Satanic Panic is one of the oldest triggers for puritanical conservatives, right? It's a tale as old as time. Usually, the female artists get slut-shamed, while the male artists are accused of promoting Satan. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, I think it was like 10 years ago, when everyone was freaking out because Miley Cyrus was twerking. Oh no, she's corrupting the youth by twerking. So there's always going to be some outrage by evangelicals and conservatives because they view this as like the youth being corrupted. Whereas Ted Cruz, if you, you know, ask him what he listened to when he was younger, it was probably Motley Crue, it was probably these rock and roll artists who conservatives back then, when he was growing up, deemed satanic as well, although I don't know, to be clear. But either way, um, of course, they were going to be outraged by this. And if they weren't outraged by the satanic aesthetic, they would be outraged because this is two members of the LGBTQ plus community being unabashedly proud of who they are with a very important message. Now, I thought this was really cool because they actually made history at the Grammys. Not that I am that concerned with the Grammys, but I do think that visibility matters. Like, out queer people winning Grammys, winning awards, that isn't a sufficient substitute for equality, obviously. But that heightened visibility is really important for LGBTQ plus youth. HuffPost explains, Smith and Petras, who took home the Grammy for best pop duo slash group performance for their song Unholy, made LGBTQ history at the ceremony. Smith, who has won Grammys in years past, became the first out non-binary artist to win the award, while Petras, a first-time Grammy nominee, became the first out trans woman to win the award. Petras, who received a standing ovation during her speech, thanked the incredible transgender legends before her who kicked open doors for her, including Madonna and the late Grammy-nominated artist Sophie. She also gave a shout-out to her mother during the emotional speech. Quote, I grew up next to a highway in nowhere, Germany, and my mother believed me that I was a girl, and I wouldn't be here without her and her support, Petra said. Yeah, so that's really encouraging to hear. Conservatives may denounce this performance as satanic, but what they're doing objectively is a net good, because for young non-binary people, young trans people to see that you can make it in this world, Despite all of the stigma surrounding your identity, despite all of the discrimination, that is very, very encouraging. Times are changing and young LGBTQ plus people, young non-binary people, young trans people can see there are people just like me and it's not weird. They can win awards. They could be embraced by millions of fans. And that is really, really important. 
So regardless of what you think of the song or the aesthetic, what Sam Smith and Kim Petras are doing here is actually really meaningful to young LGBTQ plus youth. And I'm really thankful that there's more representation for queer people in media and in culture, because without it, you would lead to more people hating themselves, which is ultimately what conservatives want. But either way, conservatives are going to cry and you can't like try to tailor your performance or your art or even your rhetoric towards what will or won't appease conservatives, because by definition, they're hate mongers. They're going to hate you regardless. So all you can do is be yourself, embrace and celebrate who you are. And if they're going to be mad, let them be mad. Either way, they're losing the culture war, regardless of how much they cry satanic panic. And evidence of that is that they've been crying about the same bullshit for decades now, literally, and they're still losing. So let them cry. And I say it's really great that Sam Smith and Kim Petra's are being themselves and proud of who they are and comfortable in their own skin. I think that's wonderful, and I'm glad that trans youth and non-binary youth can look to them as examples. When you acting like a beta, beta, beta,